Hey, it's Alex. Uh, I'm your tour guide today. Welcome to Red River Gorge. Very nice. Um, where we're going right now is going to be the Turtleback Arch, unknown to the both of us. So you will get to experience this wonderful new trail and area along with us. I hope you enjoy it. This is me. I'm, I'm going with them. That's all we got for now. Okay, well, welcome talking. back. Um, after hundreds of feet of grueling hiking, as you can see there, um, we have now reached our first scenic overlook. You can see this lovely natural fence formation with the tree growing horizontally through the middle. Um, very unique to Red River Gourds. There's a lot of these. Only place in the world that has them. So beyond that, you can see the lovely forest and there's actual living trees, unlike many forests in the country right now, which are full of dead trees. Uh, so yet another reason to come here. You can see some greenery. Just ignore the large dead tree directly in front of the camera. Uh, so there you go. Get these so, nice so Alex, did these uh, did these step formations here were they uh, geologically formed by um, bizarre water drain off uh, patterns? No, that whole hydrology field of study is a bunch of crap. Um, hmm. These are actually carved by large dinosaurs stampeding through here. Oh, okay, back good. In the day. And maybe a woolly mammoth or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I can see some footprints. Uh, yeah, very good. Okay, well, it's quite obviously once you look at it. All those scientists—they never get out in the this field. Here's a rhododendron. As you can see, it is a very lovely plant. Um, grows well down here in the gorge, along with the other giant trees that you can see in the background, and the natural nettles that grow right out of the ground on the trail. It's quite amazing. Uh, all this naturally formed, you know, no, no uh, intervention by man. Those are obviously pine cones. Uh, are you sure? I, I think these are, it's tree squat. Tree isn't? squat. Well, that, that's a common problem amongst uh, amateurs like yourself. Mm. That really is a pine cone. Mm. They're all over the place. Just you know. See, like, the one you threw away was a pine cone, but this one would be tree squat. Oh, I see. Notice that it's, it's longer, a different color. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's not as quite dark. It's a lighter right. brown. So fans of uh, Lord of the Rings lore would recognize it as Ent Squat, really. Yes. Right, okay. Um, Ents haven't been around, at least haven't been seen in the gorge for several years. Uh, so it's, it's widely debated whether they're still here or not. If mm. we come across any, I'll let you know. Okay. I wouldn't want to get stepped on one by an Ent. Here's some more of the tropical vegetation found down here. Large elephant ear types of plants. Actually, our amateur botanist there got it correct this time. This really is an elephant ear plant. Um, it's a rarity down here. You don't see many of them. The thing uh, that most people don't realize, though, Alex, is that there is a difference between African elephant ear plants and Indian elephant ear plants. Well, the problem down here is you just got to take what you can get, there being so few elephants in the in Red River Gorge. Uh, they're probably rarer than Ents, actually. Mm -hmm. And the elephant ear plant actually grows from an elephant ear when they die. You know, the ear hits the ground and then it just kind of you know, forms up into mm -hmm. this tree structure. And then, Truly uh, magical. Yeah, and then more elephants come from these leaves once really? they die and fall off. Uh, so it's a rather interesting you know, cycle sort of, of a blur. It's a blur between flora and fauna. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of neat. They're very, like you said, magical creatures. Yeah. Um, interesting thing about them is they, uh, instead of producing squat, they produce scat. Scat. Oh, that's right. I uh, had used the incorrect term in the last sequence yes. of our filming. I, I didn't feel like correcting you so you wouldn't feel like an idiot on film. But since we're doing that anyway, you're an idiot. Okay. Uh, so for all you out there, note that it's scat, not squat. Squat, yeah. Yes. Well, I was trying to coin a new term. Yeah, I was but hoping it'll it really, catch on. It really fell flat. It's me again. I don't know how well this will translate into a, uh, a two-dimensional video account of what I'm surrounded by here. But if you can tell, the trail goes on way over there. But everywhere are these rhododendra bushes. Really creates a uh, tropical feel to the gorge. One of its very unique characteristics, I think, I'm not an expert, but from what I've read, 
this part of our country is characterized by all of these types of plants that really are nowhere else but in the gorge, at least in this part of the country. So you can see them going all the way up the hillsides, all the way, totally surrounding us. We're sort of in a tropical region here, it almost seems like, but it's right in the heart of Kentucky. And, oh, there's Alex. I am the heart of I've Kentucky. Come, I've come full circle. Look at that. Here we are. There's also a hemlock that grows here that doesn't really grow anywhere else in this area, mm -hmm. I believe. I haven't seen any of Thanks. those yet. And while we're talking about the rarities, there may not be rare, but certainly a large quantity of ferns everywhere you turn as well. And lots of moss. You know, Alex, the, uh, the myth that the moss only grows on the north side of a tree is exactly that. It is a, it's an urban legend. It's a myth. It's actually green spray paint that is applied to the trees by the locals to sort of a scoffing at trail hikers laughing like you tourists. and I. Yeah, they're laughing at tourists. They know that we believe that and uh, they will apply it to the south side of a tree just to get us to go in the wrong direction. So, okay, more later. So here we are looking down a cliff. See, here's my feet for scale, right? And there's a drop off. And how far down is that, Alex? 50 feet? Oh, I was thinking more like 3,000. Okay, yeah, it might actually be close. I'd say 2,000 maybe at the most. But uh, you can see the stream all the way down there. So there are little uh, footfalls here that could lead to your demise if you're not careful. But there's a, we've been following this uh, lazy little stream that's uh, got a nice sand base, a little copper color in the water. Let's see if we can get a close up of that. Probably just looks muddy on film. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we're at yet another nice little vista here. You can see a slight little bluff or cliff face there. Um, Some trees that have been cut down by the forestry service here right at the edge to keep people from unwittingly falling to their death. Yeah, this, this view actually comes up on you quite suddenly. You, you, yeah, you don't really expect it and then bam, it's there. Uh, one interesting thing we need to point out here is if you can see down on the stream there's a tire yes. there. Yeah, there it is. Um, actually, the road to get back here, it's, uh, it's actually marked as an improved road because they actually have, that's the service center there. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a spare tire for you. Uh, you actually just drive kind of up along the stream bed there. Yeah. Um, that's how you get back to the parking lot for this area. It's a little rugged, yeah, you but, know, for, for city drivers, but around here it's yeah. pretty common. I mean, it's an improved road, right? I mean, yeah. we're not even on the primitive roads yet. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you definitely get an authentic outdoorsy experience here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really nice, though, to be out here in the total primitive world and to have subtle reminders of civilization. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it brings you back, it reconnects you to, to from where you've come from, and uh, it, it doesn't make you feel totally isolated the way some people probably do if they're out here for too long. Oh, wow, yeah, there's there's people that come out here and they just completely lose their minds in, in all the nature. I think they devolve. Yeah, I mean, you really become the, like, caveman state. Mm -hmm. uh, there are all kinds of littered caveman bones and clubs along mm -hmm. these trails. But, you know, if they can see that spare tire down there, suddenly they think, Goodyear, B.F. Goodrich, Cooper Tire, you know, I am a modern man. seal on the